this is an old film, it's from 2005, um, and I watched it last night. I'm going to break this video up into three sections. I'm first going to talk about the film, give you some information about who made it, kind of like production stuff, like some fun little information to know about the film. Then I'm going to go into the synopsis of the film, tell you what the film is about. And then the third one is I am going to basically give my review of the film. If you don't know, I'm a screenwriter and a director, and I am writing right now a road trip film, and so I'm watching films to do influence my writing and, you know, just become a better filmmaker to, you know, get opinions if I like things or don't like things. So at the end, I'm going to rate, uh, I have things that I, I'll tell you things I liked about the film, some things that I... Uh, thought could be better, and then I'm going to tell you some things that I would steal for my film. Um, so let's just get into it, shall we? Also, uh, some fun news too. We have a Patreon, so go check that out in the links down below, and uh, give this video a like and a comment down below before you go to bed. Okay, so this film is called The Puffy, The Puffy Chair. <laughs> Coffee chair. Uh, it is from 2005, and it's from um, the Duplass Duplass brothers. D U B L A S S. You probably recognize um, them before. Mark Duplass is an actor that you've seen before. This was a brother duo that made this film, which was only cost fifteen thousand dollars. $15,000. Films usually cost, if they're indie, around like 200 k to a million. This was $15,000, and it was shot in a mumble core um, style. So if you don't know what mumble core is, I didn't really know either until I learned more about it. Um, but mumble core is a filming that is basically um, a single camera. So I think it's literally like you would have your video camera and you would just film and you want to do any lighting setups really. Um, there's not like really good camera quality and it's supposed to kind of give this uh, amateur look, realistic look. And this film genre is uh, really focuses highly on um, dialogue and a lot on um, improv as well for low budget because you basically just have a camera so the reason it wouldn't be for like a high plot you know like cars blowing up and you know moving around is because it's really expensive to do that so this is more for intimate um, shots so that's the style um, if I'm not wrong you can correct me but I think Mumblecore actually was created through this film in 2005 and other genres. Um, yes, uh, filmmakers associated with the genre include Andrew Bajolski, Lynn Shelton, and the Duplass brothers, Mark and Jay. Greta Gerwig also did this before as well. So this film uh, had its world premiere at the Sundance Film Festival in 2005. South by Southwest in March of 2005, uh, and where it won the Audience Award. Uh, the film was then released on June 2nd, 2006, a year later, by Netflix and Roadside Attractions, so then it had a limited release, meaning that it went into theaters um, in like Los Angeles or New York, really big cities, for only like a couple weeks. How I would describe this film to you is it's basically a road trip film that follows um, Mark's character, who I think his name is just Mark. I think they're named by their first names, which is ridiculous. Mark goes on a road trip with um, Katie. He basically buys this puffy couch, puffy chair off of eBay and does a road trip from New York down to, let's say, I think it's like in South Carolina or North Carolina to pick up this chair then drive it to his, to Atlanta, to his uh, father for his birthday. So uh, the couch, his father 
used to have like um, a very nostalgic chair and Mark basically was like, I'm going to buy that old chair that I used to love. I'm going to give it to him. And then he plans on going on this road trip alone, but then he brings his girlfriend and they're already on the rocks and they go on this road trip and then his brother joins and it's a story of them three basically navigating down to Atlanta and it's a romantic comedy and it's all about the love and the relationships and all that fun jazz. Uh, the film is around, I think, like 90 minutes. It's not too long. It's 85 minutes. Um, it's in English. It was filmed in the United States. It, um, as I told you, it was $15,000 to make, and the box office was 194000 so it did really good, um, considering. So fun. Easter eggs about this film, which is so absurd, which I didn't understand. The Duplass brothers wrote and directed this. Mark stars in it. The girl that is his girlfriend, they're actually married in real life and they have two kids, which is crazy. And then I also just find it funny, it starred Red Wilkins and they just used Red's first name in the film as well. The film was made for $15,000, but um, the money was borrowed from the Duplass his parents and all the actors were paid only $100 per day. Um, there was extensive impro improvisation used, which is really interesting. That, as a director, is really hard to film because if you think about it, improv, you don't know, it's just coming up with lines and basically just improvising. And you usually want two cameras for that because if you get one shot of one character, you're going to need to, like, it's hard to redo that can capture the scene again if it's all improv, so I love it how they did that. They shot it on a Panasonic AGDVX100, um, and the scenes that are set in North Carolina were actually filmed in a small main town called Millbridge, which was the hometown of Katie Asselton, who was the girl in this film, and in fact the filmmaker stayed with Alston's parents during production. So they were very low budget, um, which I thought was very, very cool. And uh, let's just get into, now we'll get into basically the storyline, and I'm just going to tell you basically how I remember it. So the film starts, it's present day in 2005. We open up with Mark and Katie. I'm, I'm believing that's their names. So Mark and Katie are basically uh, sitting at a, at a dining room table, and they are Katie's telling. He's like, I don't want to leave too, and they have this really beautiful moment. Mark then gets a phone call and basically takes a phone call in front of Katie, kind of ignoring her, and Katie throws all of the dishes on the table, off the table, and basically leaves the apartment very frustrated. You can tell that this is not the first time he has ignored her in this way. He runs out, tries to find her, but she's gone. So next day he gets in the car, he's about to go on the road trip, and he, you know what he does is he goes to Katie's place and he stands outside with a boombox on his head and he, and Katie looks up the window and is like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going on a road trip, but I want you to come with me. And she goes, okay. And so she comes and joins them and it's all happy, happy, happy. This romantic couple leave New York in a van and they make their way, I want to say, on the way to North Carolina, I don't know where they pick. Of. Um, but they're driving and basically they go to stay the night at his brother's place, Rhett. So they get there and Rhett is a very funny character. You meet Rhett first, the, the truck pulls into the home and Rhett is crouched behind these tall bushes, just crouching and we don't know why. And it is until Mark tell, yells at him to, that they're there that he pops out and he has a video camera. We got to Rutch is showing Mark and Katie this video of him filming this like iguana on this like a leaf and it's beautiful but it's really random and they're basically watching it in his living room. He has like no furniture in his living room. So he's kinda poor. And um, this is where uh Rhett is like, Well so why are you guys here? And Katie and Mark are like, 
Mars. They were back in the hotel or something or in the van and Mark's like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we have to stay the night basically here in North Carolina because the chairs are getting a full start. They're paying $300 for it. And he was like, how did you do that? And he's like, oh, I just did. And we know it's because he like burdened them. Then they basically spend the day in the movie theater. They have to wait, right? So they go to this movie theater and there's no one in this movie theater. It's like really small. It's like really janky, like a hundred people movie theater, but there's only like four people. And Mark and Katie are there and Red is right next to them. And then there's this lady behind them that Red keeps looking to. And they keep making eyes. And then this lady gets up and leaves. And Red follows her. And they basically leave the movie theater. And Katie and Mark are excited. But Katie's like, oh my god, what if he falls in love? Like, this is how you and I met. We met randomly. And like, what if this is how this happens? And, um, and basically, they go back to the hotel. Um, Mark and Katie, and they realize Red's still not there. So they call the movie theater, and they find where he is. And he's back at this house with this lady. And they're slow dancing, and they watch. They walk in. They like walk in and they're, they're like, hi, can we get Rhett? And the woman's like, oh, come in, like, get a drink. And it's then that Rhett basically looks at them and it's like, guys, this is the woman that I'm gonna marry. <laughs> and they're like, no way. So, what do they do? They throw an engagement party for this couple. And then, you know what happens? And they're like, you know what? They want to get married now. So then Mark basically wets them. And they're all drunk, and it's night out, and he's joking, and he's like, you have to, you make a promise to each other, to, to commit to each other, even during hard times, and that you'll find happiness. And Katie is next to him watching, basically, um, becoming teary-eyed and stuff, and, uh, they basically, Red stays with them, and then Katie and, and, um, Mark go back to the hotel, and, uh, it was a really good night, but then they uh, get into a fight during the wedding. Mark played this song, and Katie was like, why have you never played it for me? It's amazing. And Mark was like, you always, um, you know, you always second, you always, like, say I'm not doing good enough, or there's something wrong with me, or like, why am I doing this right? And she was like, I basically don't want to get into this relationship if there's no reason for us to get married. And he doesn't really have a response. He basically is just like, I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. But then he basically realizes, like, you get mad at me, and why do you even want to marry me? And she doesn't have an answer. So he storms off and leaves her. The next day, assuming he leaves, the, like, sleeps in the van, the next day they're at breakfast, a lot of tension. Um, you know, Katie's believing that Red is married. Red comes back and he's like, she's like, where's the woman? And Red's like, well, you know, I gave it my best shot. And Mark was right. Mark before, this is how the fight started. Mark was basically like, oh, Red's going to probably drop her in like a day or two. And, you know, Katie believed in love and she was like, no, like maybe not. And so Katie gets really mad at Red and Red's like, what did I do? And um, they basically split their ways. Mark's like, I'm going to go get the know, go get the van, right, you go get the couch, the, 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 the sofa, and then um, Katie pay for breakfast, and so they split up. Red goes to see if the chair is ready. It is not. The whole team go over, they basically bang on the door. Mark threatens to basically run the car into the chair person guy's house. They watch as the chair is done. And they put the chair into the van and they continue their road trip. They continue the road trip with the Buffy chair and Rhett is sitting on it and he basically, everyone's really quiet and he's basically like, there's bad mojo. Like, there's bad mojo in the chair. We need to stop. Um, they don't listen, but then they sleep at another motel and Rhett basically opens the van, takes out the chair, and lights it on fire. And everyone comes out running and um, Mark is leaving punches her bride's brother, but then falls on the ground, dislocates his shoulder, and Mark at there's in, is in the hospital, and he's crying, and that's like his all his lost moment. He's crying and upset. And then we cut to them driving to Atlanta. They meet the parents. There's no chair. Um, they don't really talk about it, the chair. And then Mark basically asks his dad 
why he married his mom and he basically came up with this uh the dad basically said well there wasn't this big moment and there won't be a big moment for you you just gotta decide and then we cut to basically um emily and mark outside in a field and they're chatting and you think you know oh my god maybe he's gonna ask her to marry him but then before anything katie um says they should break up and he basically is like do you think we should break up or you think that that's what we should do like do you actually want to or you think that's what i want to do and she just goes i think we should break up and they hug and she's crying and he's crying and then the film ends so that's how that ends um i'm going to break up the film in segments and then i'm going to talk about what i liked and what i didn't like and all that stuff but their structure in film so the opening image of this film would probably be of mark and katie uh in love chatting right the closing image at the end of the film is uh them breaking up really sad for films if you didn't know this the opening and the ending are usually polar opposite images um, for some there are some stories where they like it doesn't change but most it's polarizing the that's how to win the call to action or the inciting incident is um i would say it's when they meet up with the brother and the brother's like oh let me join you so that's how that road trip goes um into act two so they're like oh do the brother does the brother join act that's the debate act two is them all three on the road trip the midpoint of the film uh you know like a false victory or a false um defeat is when they find the puffy chair they find out the puppy chair is disgusting and they're like what do we do um the climax of the film is i would say it's i think it's one though it's a little tricky but i think the climax of the film is when the the um it's when the uh, chair is lit on fire the all is lost is when the chair is dead That's the dark night of the soul when you're like, you lost everything, what do you do now? And he has an arm broken and he doesn't have a chair. We go to Act 3 where he basically goes to um, Atlanta and it's basically Act 3 is um, basically the returning to the normal world having changed. So um, he's now in Atlanta, but basically he could have been back in New York and um, he sees his family does have the chair he talks to his dad and his dad gives advice about you know getting married and then he we go to the resolution and he basically you know talks to katie and the resolution is we could have thought that they would have gotten together but in this case they uh got apart they broke up so that's the structure um i may get my rating at the end but now we're gonna get into my stuff so things that i adore about this movie and i I love the music. They had these scenes where the car is traveling down the road from New York to, you know, North Carolina or to Atlanta, and it's just a montage of a car driving with really nice music, and it felt very upbeat and positive. Um, I really love the absurdity of this film. It's shot in a very realistic way. It's very low-key, but all the things that actually happen are really absurd. There's a wedding, there's a chair burning on fire, um, there's a guy being Hindu wake up, like, very disgusting but normalized behavior, sort of, um, and I love that because I think movies should be like that, they should be disgusting and funny and, like, very polarizing sometimes. Um, I love Brett's character, and I love the character work. I like that we learn that the main character, Mark, is a liar. I love that, you know, this is a film that's about, it's a road trip, but it's really actually about uh, marriage and romance, which is a fun part of the, what I want to write my film about. Um, I think Rhett can mirror my character in my film really well. Um, he's very aloof and very nature-based and very, like, with the moment very hippie um, I love that this is a film it's a retro film and a 